I'm gonna give you a breakdown of how you can start a food cart or food truck business. I used to be in this business, so the tips I'm gonna give you are firsthand, right? Real life experience. Um, first, we did a video a few days ago where we went out and sold $400 worth of food in two hours off of a food cart. So now I'm gonna give you like a more detailed approach. How would you set that up? So you're interested in mobile food vending, all right? I'd say the first thing you should do before you even come up with your detailed business plan and get all fixated on exactly what you want to sell, take a visit downtown, City Hall, or um, wherever they grant permits for street vending. That's where you need to go first. Go in person or jump on the website and look at the regulations. Because often, when we decide we want to do mobile vending, we ride around in our neighborhood or in our city or in the neighboring city and we see perfect locations and we think why isn't anyone else selling at that location right and it's likely because there are regulations that prohibit vending in that particular spot right i ran into that problem when i wanted to start my food cart Okay, cities, townships, and probably states, whatever governing body exists, um, they have regulations, okay? Um, for instance, if you have a food cart and you plan on putting it on the sidewalk, they might have a, um, a regulation that says, once you put your food cart on the sidewalk, there needs to be six feet left over so that pedestrians can pass through without you know bumping into your food cart so let's say your food cart is four feet wide four feet by six feet right your four feet plus six feet equals ten feet so you'd have to find a sidewalk that's at least ten feet wide now you're probably thinking well I've seen ten feet or 10 foot wide um, walkways in prime locations and still no food vendor, right? You're like, that would be my spot. I would crush the game. Well, slow down. You have other regulations, like maybe you have to be um, 10 feet from a ramp, right? So now you need a 10 foot space where you 10 foot from a ramp and six feet from a corner, right? You know, a corner. Um, intersection where the streets meet so you know this many feet from the intersection 10 feet from a ramp 10 foot wide sidewalk so forth and so on right cities are really meticulous now I won't say all cities some cities are pretty laxed you know they may have these rules in place but they don't enforce them strictly but still the first thing you need to do is go downtown or wherever or jump on the website and see what they have to say I would even tell them specifically where I want to be because you may have zones where every space is okay except the exact spot that you want in my case my city had a map that made things a lot easier and the map indicated which spots were okay for street vending and which spots weren't and in some cities even differentiate between um, food and other sorts of street vending. So I'd say go down to your city hall or wherever, um, go see whoever issues vending permits and talk to them before you get your hopes up high and um, before you make too much of a plan. The next thing I do, um, I'd probably go to the health board in New Jersey. Um, it's a, a statewide, I think it's the statewide health board. And uh, you'd have to pass an inspection, right? Your truck or your cart would have to pass a health inspection. It's pretty simple, but it's very specific. It's not just a matter of you keeping a clean cart or truck. And it's not even just a matter of you passing like a, um, a serve safe or, or safe serve it you know they want specific stuff like um a three-part sink 
And maybe they don't care what size it is, but you have to have a three part sink, right? So you can't just have one big sink. You need the three part because they want one part of the sink to wash, the other to sanitize, the other to rinse, right? So you need those three. And then they might um, wanna make sure that your water reaches a certain temperature because if you're washing dishes and working with food, um, certain temperatures are required. OK, um, they may require that you have a cooler that reaches a certain degree. Right. So you don't need to have the freezer as long as you have a cooler and they'll stick a thermometer in your cooler to make sure. And they're going to um, run a thermometer on your water faucet to make sure that you can hold uh, the proper temperature, the required temperature. Uh, what else do they want? They might want a certain amount of counter space. They might want your counters to be stainless steel. They might want you to have a fire extinguisher on board, right? So um, before you get a custom cart built, it's smart to know what the, uh, what the health department requires, all right? Once you take a look at these things, I think then it's safe to start planning stuff like your menu and exactly what you want to sell because certain certain things are prohibited. You might plan on uh, making food from scratch, you know. In some places, there's a difference between selling hot dogs and maybe breakfast sandwiches that you're going to take out of a, a wrapper and heat up versus you cooking like stew chicken, curry chicken from scratch. Right. They don't always allow everything. Right. Um, one of the things that um, that matters when you when you decide what type of food you want to sell is a commissary. Right. Some health departments require that you attach yourself to a commissary, which is basically a kitchen that sort of sponsors you in a way. Now, at this kitchen. This is the place where this is the designated place where you agree to store your food overnight. OK, um, some cities, some jurisdictions don't want you storing food at your residence. So you'd have to pay a commissary, pay a kitchen to allow you to keep your food in their freezer and in their refrigerators. You should also be prepping your food at the commissary. You should also be cleaning your cart or your truck at the commissary. Now, you're gonna see people who run food trucks and food carts who don't have a commissary. Don't assume that you could follow behind them because maybe they're in a place where things aren't regulated so strictly. But um, you can't count on catching that same break. When I was out there selling food, there were times when the, uh, the not the health department, but the, uh, the, the city um, inspections would show up and they wanted to see the inside of your cart and they wanted to see your business certificate. OK, so another thing is obviously you're going to need to get um, get your business registered, I guess LLC or however you're going to do it. sole proprietorship, whatever you want to do, um, it probably won't matter. You probably get leeway to file however you want to file, but you, you must file. But before you file, um, check out the steps that I gave you, you know, at the beginning of the video, because those things are more important. Those things dictate if it's even possible for you to run the business that you're thinking of. Okay. So we said, um, look at regulations as far as like zoning and, and spacing, right? That's what the permit board, uh, visit the health department or look them up online and see what sort of regulations they have and what sort of setup you need in order to sell the food that you plan on selling. OK, then once you are uh, confident that you'll be able to, you know, make good on, on, on with those two points, you can go ahead and register your business. Then you can go ahead and think about your menu. Um, once you get set up, go with your idea, but I'd say be flexible. For instance, 
this is common sense for some people but for instance if you come out with a big idea that you're gonna sell sausage and hot dogs once you get on site understand people are gonna request what they like more okay so you're gonna show up at places where people want turkey dogs or people want all beef or people don't want um, uh, 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 a turkey hot dog that was in the same pot as a pork hot dog you know that sort of stuff people are that particular so you want to um, leave space for that um, be prepared to flex to what the customer want because when you first get out there people are gonna test you you know they want to know that you're willing to bring the things that they want and most importantly I'd say people want to know that you're going to be out there every day, right? All those other points I made are cool, but once you get out there, understand one of the most important parts of building a business, especially a food business, is being out there every day. Or if you aren't going to be there every day, make sure um, whatever schedule you plan on keeping is consistent because when folks are going to work, you know, lunch is very important. Breakfast is important. And the last things folks want is to um, leave their food at home. You know, they forego preparing lunch. They forego preparing breakfast because they think you're going to be out there and then you don't show up. That's the quickest way to sabotage your business. So be consistent. Um, maintain the schedule that you uh you know, that you told customers you would keep and be flexible. I remember I came out with a, a variety bag of chips. I sat everything, well, I pinned everything on the rack, clipped everything to the rack, real nice variety with like, uh, say Cheetos, uh, chips, plain chips, salt and vinegar, pretzels, a whole variety. But you're gonna notice that some things sell faster than others. In my case, people were asking for pretzels. I didn't expect pretzel. I thought it'd be something with the cheese or something, you know, like a D Dorito. You know, honestly, I thought pretzels were kind of plain. But I guess based on my location, people wanted pretzels. So guess what? Instead of buying the variety pack, or maybe I did buy the variety pack, but I found a way to make sure I had more pretzels than the other stuff. You know, maybe I found a box of just pretzels. So you get like a 48 box with the mix and then find a 20 box with just pretzels. So you got to be flexible. So if you do that, you show up every day, you should be good. And uh, I say this too. A lot of people start businesses, especially like small cash businesses that people consider hustles, you know, like selling food on the road. And the the entrepreneur is sometimes thinking in terms of support. I always tell people it's bad to um, ask customers to support you. And here's why I say that. And first, let me say it's, it's different for the customer. If the customer wants to support, that's fine. But you as the entrepreneur shouldn't expect it. Here is why. People consume, right? People buy goods largely because of their personal or selfish desire and needs. And I don't mean selfish in a bad way. I mean, the thing that compels somebody to buy something is, is within, you know? Now, a person could buy just for the sake of supporting you but if you rely on that as the business owner you're you're giving yourself a crutch that could stop you from building a stronger business right a strong business offers products that really speaks to the customer on a personal level and when you do that you won't have to ask somebody to support you and again it's cool if they want to but think about it like this when you run into a new potential customer and you have maybe a few seconds or a minute to win them over, what makes more sense? What's more compelling to you? If you have one second or a few seconds with this potential customer, 
and you could only say one thing, would you say support me or would you say I have this thing that speaks to a need or desire that you have? Which one is more compelling? Think about it. When you go to buy something, typically, because there are exceptions, but typically, think of all the goods you purchase throughout the month. Do you buy those goods from certain companies because you want to support the company? Or do you buy goods from those uh, providers because they satisfy a need that you have because they answer a question you have right so that's how we need to think when we market our products so please follow all those steps i just laid out but when you show up on the block or in front of the board of education or the transportation center wherever you're going to set up your cart in front of the college don't come out there think talking about yo support me i want you to come out there with items that really appeal to people right stuff that's going to speak to them on a personal level items food drinks that they're going to look at and say i have to have that that's my favorite i've always loved it or i've always wanted to try it when you operate that way you're going to do good now we did a video a few days ago where um we went out and did like four hundred dollars in about two hours and we didn't really even plan for it we went out there got the hustle on and that's what happened and you can have days like that or you can have a certain location where you rock every day either way if you want to see that video you can catch that it's really interesting had like a little story arc to it where we almost didn't know if we make it in time to to sell the goods but everything worked out and check it out so you can see the applied version of what I'm explaining right here.